So, so last year was our first time doing this. We were on day two. Um, it was a packed room, so we were really excited, probably nervous. And um, so this year we got the email to come back, and we got day one. I thought like we made a big time. Like we're in the great American room or something. And then we got cut from an hour and 15 minutes to an hour. So I don't know. But my name is Jeff Purr. I am the MTSS coordinator for Ben Salem Township School District. I'm also the high school um, athletic director. I've been for the last 11 years. Uh, we tried something new last year. We tried to implement MTSS at the high school. It is done across the state, across the country, at the elementary level. Um, it's done effectively many places. They have wind time. It works. And trying to replicate something like that at a high school is incredibly difficult. With teacher schedules and with the focus at the elementary level being skill deficit and the focus at the high school level being credits and, graduate and get your credits to graduate high school. So um, I'm going to introduce you to my team in a second. Uh, we work really hard at Ben Salem High School. Uh, we've made a lot of growth. We're really excited to share it with you. Uh, the biggest thing I want to share today is that the goal of this presentation is you guys are going to have takeaways. Not just like goodie prizes over there at the table, but takeaways like you can go back and talk to your superintendent, your principal, your building leadership team about things that you can take home and do um, in your school district and your respective buildings as soon as next week. So I'm going to introduce the team real quick. Um, unfortunately, we did have um, a horrific tragedy in our community last night. So our superintendent was actually on his way up here this morning. He had to stay back. The first person I was going to introduce, Mr. Cohen, our assistant superintendent, he had to stay back. And our building principal at uh, Ben Sam High School had to stay back. But uh, Shannon McMahon is in the back. She just likes to observe. <laughs> <clears throat> You're going to meet a Kuderini, Michelle, and Ed. They are three math interventionists at the high school. You're going to meet Natalie, Jess, and Molly, our three ELA interventionists. And then for like the last 15 to 20 minutes or so, uh, I'm going to turn over to Mr. Butler, one of the building high school assistant principals. And he brought two teachers, Carly and Ron, that helped make PBS run at Ben Sound High School. And probably the most important person, although she'll talk the least of the 35 of us today, is Kristen Tester. That's our tech from the Bucks County IU. And she guides us. See? You guys know who the MVP in the room is. So this is just real quick um, about our district, our demographics. We are diverse. I do remember, and I shared this last year, uh, I think it was my junior year in high school. Uh, Governor Tom Ridge at the time came to Ben Salem High School, and he announced that we were the most diverse high school in the state of Pennsylvania. I believe last year we were number two. So we've been pretty consistent. Um, and there's just a quick breakdown of our demographics. Also, at the very end, our goal is to stop at least five minutes before 2 o'clock um, to ask questions. We'll share our email. Last year was awesome. We had about six schools leave this presentation, contact me, and they came to Ben Sound High School to visit and to look at the ELA Center, to look at the Math Center, and watch the real MVPs, which are the teachers at the room. So before I turn over to the teachers, I just want to share, like, th this is not a secret formula, right? You just need two things. You need a supportive district office. I'm, I'm very blessed. I have a very supportive district office, but I, I just want to share every superintendent wants kids to do well. Every high school principal wants students to do well. Every principal, every person in this room and every person we know should want kids to do well. So whether you have a superintendent that's as, I guess, like mine is very accessible and would answer the phone on one phone call or set up a meeting, even if you have a superintendent that maybe isn't as accessible, if you bring some of these ideas back, I guarantee they're going to want to listen. All right, because they're going to share the ELA Math Center, the growth. All right, and the data just doesn't lie, and that's our focus this year is just improving our data points so that we can share it out with them what we're doing. The second thing is you just got to surround yourself with good people. I believe, <clears throat> being a former high school assistant principal for eight years, doing a lot of interviews, most teachers come in one of two ways. They're either a really good teacher when it comes to content, and they know their knowledge, and they're excited, um, but maybe they got to learn on how to build relationships and the communication and personal skills or vice versa. You have a lot of teachers that have these great communication skills, people skills, but maybe they still need to learn a little bit more about their content. Um, why is Ben Sound successful? It's really, really simple. It's not some crazy magic formula or potion. It's I got six teachers that have both. And I promise you every school that is represented here today, high school, middle school, elementary, across the state of Pennsylvania, you know who your teachers are. You know the teachers that the kids will run through walls for. You know the teachers that connect with the kids. If they're not just another student in the classroom, they built that relationship with them. At our level, they know where these kids work, what sports they play, a little bit about their family, a little bit about their interests, and they've connected with them. 
Not to mention that they all know their content really well. So the kids enjoy going to these centers. All right, we have some random quizzes. We're not gonna come up and get the prizes today. Um, right now, I'm gonna ask you to wait till like 155 and come up and get them. We first come, first choice. We start off with the easy one just to get the party started. <laughs> what is Ben Sam High School's mascot? It was on the first slide. I'm not calling the Valley people. It is the Owls. There's a winner. All right, Kristen is going to give a quick background. Um, make sure you come visit us around 155. Kristen's going to give a background on how this all started as a district and where we came from. I'll lower that just a smidge. Um, so it is my great privilege and honor to support this school district um, and to support this building and this team. Um, they make me look really good with the work that they're doing. Um, and I, you know, we have had a lot of really good support, important support from our superintendent, Dr. Lee. Um, he was the one who really had the vision for MTSS. I remember he and Mr. Cohen called me one summer and said, this was like six or seven years ago. We know we want to implement MTSS. Is that something you can help us with? And I said, yeah, you know, it is something I can help you with. And they really set the vision for this work and have um, continued their commitment to it, um, both with resources and support. Um, because any of you who have started this work know this doesn't happen overnight, right? This is three to five years. I'm even starting to think this is more like five to 10 years <laughs> worth of work. Um, but my experience is that this is work worth doing. It's hard work, but it's work worth doing. Um, so this district has a long history of implementing school-wide PBIS. Um, in their elementary schools, in their middle schools. Um, so that was a place where we started this work at Ben Salem High School. Um, we were a part of um, the Patton MTSS cohorts um, several years ago, enhancing secondary outcomes. Um, and you know, through that project, learned some important foundational work in terms of the framework and some, and some of our data sources. Um, you know, COVID was a setback for everybody. And when we came back, you know, from the, that 19, you know, 2019, 2020 school year, you know, all of a sudden that emphasis on academic, you know, intervention became really important, right? Because we were seeing kids with increasing skill gaps, right? So, you know, how can we support our students and provide that more intensive instruction and support um, to our high schoolers? Um, because at that time, our students were getting support in elementary and middle school, right? And then less was available to them at the high school. So um, last year um, was when Ben Salem opened their ELA and their math intervention centers. Just out of curiosity, any of you in the audience were here for last year's presentation? Okay, a few of you. <laughs> um, so you will hear a little bit about how that started and then sort of where we've come um, this year. Um, so this year is year two, you know, of those intervention centers. This year, our school-wide PBIS team has earned their banner. They are being recognized, um, you know, this evening. Um, we all we are also now a part of the Patent Project um, for comprehensive support for developing tier two behavior interventions, um, because now that we have a, a solid tier one, you know, we know that some of our students need some additional support beyond that. So um, and now we're ready ready to take that on too. So I'm sort of what the last piece that stands between you and the important people. <laughs> um, so? Oh, still you. So this is um, a recap from last year, but it was probably the most important thing I shared, and this is probably what drove a lot of people to come to the high school. How do you make it work, right? We don't have this rotating win where we can push in all these supports in first grade, second grade, third, fourth, fifth, and sixth. When kids go to specials, it was, it's, it's so much easier. Um, every school's different, so I can't give you just the perfect formula for how it would work in your district. But I just have a couple things, and again, this, this slide can be shared, and you can always email me, and I'll, I'll share it out. But <clears throat> when do we pull kids for intervention? What we did, um, due to contractual restraints, we didn't want to do like the power hour that some high schools have implemented across PA. We added a new course. It's basically a glorified study hall. Um, you can do a lot of things with it. We didn't want to call it a study hall for a variety of reasons. But it is a chance for a kid to get a mental health break, which we know how important social and emotional is. It is a kid for a chance, it is a chance for a kid to do homework. Right? I'm okay with that. Like some people think that's like a bad word. 
but they work at night. They have full-time sports, full-time dance, full-time gymnastics lessons. For a kid to sit there at 11 o'clock at night is ridiculous to do homework, and they haven't even showered and eaten dinner. So we thought it was a good idea in the school board and people that make a lot more than me in district office to actually give these kids a little bit of break during the day. We made it mandatory for 9th and 10th graders, optional for 11th and 12th because a lot of parents want their kids to take certain electives and get credits. Um, I mentioned constraints to the contract, and then obviously number four is that elementary versus secondary. Kids need to pass credits, but we still want to help um, kids with skill remediation. I think number five is just kind of that constant across any school. You deal with change. I will say um, I'm very blessed. Maybe it was because I've worked at the high school for 21 years. There wasn't a whole lot of pushback at Ben Salem High School. Had a faculty meeting, met with the staff. There was a couple concerns about the home change. Other than that, 95% uh, of teachers were, were okay with what's happening. This is where we're at now. <clears throat> My last um, couple comments before I do turn it over to, as Chris said, the stars, the MEPs. Uh, a couple just little fun facts. Last year, the guidance counselors emailed out in June. It was our highest graduation rate in over 10 years. Um, well, since COVID. We had, the, thank you. <clears throat> we, we had the least amount of failures that we've had um, from a guidance counselor that's been there 20 years. It was the least amount of senior failures, the least amount of failures. Uh, like I said, it's all about that building relationship piece. The kids go to see these teachers. They make it fun. Right? They build that relationship. They actually, you're going to hear a kid say, like, I don't hate math anymore. I didn't realize it wasn't like, really that serious if I just knew this one little step. <laughs> And in other teachers' defense, 1 to 33 versus 1 to 7 or 1 to 4 or 1 to 12 is a big difference. Uh, we also added in Lincoln K to 12. I know Lincoln was upstairs. They should give me a plug for this or something. <laughs> um, our big thing now is just to continue to, to show the data. But when we provide that Lincoln and then, teach, and then the kids come back to the classroom and they retake that test and they show the growth rate, um, a lot of teachers had a lot more buy-in. So, Lastly, this is just, um, we call it MTSS reference cards. Again, be more than happy to share out. Here's a secondary math one um, that was given to all the staff in the first day of school. Elementary math, high school ELA, and K-8 to K to ELA. So these are just little reference cards. Um, but it has some nice instructional strategies. Does some stuff with tier one, tier two. And without, oh my god, one more quiz. Sorry, before I turn it over. What is the best football team in PA? Last year we had a lot of like State College and Pittsburgh people. So I just had to make sure we were clear on this. <laughs> Incorrect. <laughs> that is going to be a prize later on. Congratulations. <clears throat> All right, before I let our six rock stars speak, um, Dave and kids make a video. Not only is this video amazing, and not only does it show how talented they are, but the kids' testimonials, and most importantly, our superintendent found a point to show this at convocation when he met with the whole entire school district on the first day of school, a version of this. Hi, you made it. Welcome, Welcome to the, the ELS Center. Center. We started something new and exciting at Ben Salem High School last year. Intervention Centers. The Intervention Centers are places where students can get some extra help in literature, writing, and mathematics. There are many reasons why someone might attend an intervention center. Maybe they are struggling with a specific concept or they are behind in their work. Students are invited or assigned to a center based on their grades or benchmark scores, teacher recommendations, or counselor recommendations. They either attend the centers during their AL time or future ready seminar classes, which are similar to study halls where time is built into their schedules for students to complete tasks and be more successful. In the math center, Students are given a quick diagnostic assessment to be sure they have the prerequisite skills necessary to master their current or upcoming unit. This helps us know exactly which skills to focus on with each student. In the ELA Center, students can expect to do a quick reading assessment which helps us know which strategies will help each student best. They can also expect us to do a grade check and help students prioritize assignments. We have lots of tips and tricks to help students get started on assignments that seem overwhelming or when they aren't feeling very inspired. We also help students by offering some scaffolding to help students be successful. In the ELA Center, that might look like providing graphic organizers, sentence frames, or checklists to help them structure their assignments. In the Math Center, scaffolding might look like graphic organizers, assignments that gradually add skills as the students progress through them, or manipulatives 
to assist in making abstract concepts more concrete. The ELA and math centers have been very successful so far. We have seen great improvement in student grades for those students who attend. We have seen improvement on benchmark assessments and student skills. Even better, we have been able to build relationships with students who we sometimes wouldn't have had the chance to work with otherwise. I like ELA Center because it really helped me with my grades because in the beginning of the year I had an F and now it's an A and it helped me with my writing and literature class. Something that I've learned from coming to the Math Center is that it's okay to ask for help because that's how you grow. I started coming to the ELA Center because my English, I was failing my English class and I really needed help to bring up my grade. I came here and Miss Henshaw and Odie helped me with my work and I started to see improvement in my grades. I am beyond grateful that I came into the ELA Center. All right, you should be good whenever you're ready. Some of my learning in the Math Center is no, no matter how bad you are at math or good at, at math, you will always learn something and accomplish your goals in math in the math center and you can always open up to, to your teacher. Like a lot of people don't like math and pass math, but at first I wasn't passing math and by opening up to my teacher, I learned that I, learned that I could learn a lot of things in math and now I'm passing math, so. Being in the ELA Center allowed me to be eligible for sports. In the beginning of the year, I was struggling with writing a literature class and felt like I needed extra help. That's when my teacher referred me to the ELA Center, and ever since I've been going, I'm, I've been showing consistent improvement on my grades. Overall, we've had a great start for this initiative. We are so excited to keep building on our success in year two. We couldn't be more pleased with the positive impact the intervention centers have made for students, and we can't wait to see the great things our amazing Ben Salem Owls accomplished this year. Hi, you made it. Welcome, Welcome to the, the ELS Center. and let them know um, about the centers, okay? Um, so I was kind of like the first person that they spoke to and I gave them an idea of what it was about. And overwhelmingly, the student perception was super positive. Um, the biggest thing I can say was that they were relieved. They were relieved that somebody saw that they were struggling and that they needed help. Um, and they were very supportive of the idea of being placed in a center to get that additional help. Um, I also would reach out to parents and let them know like, hey, your child is being assigned to a center. Please reach out with any questions. The center is designed to give them extra supports and help them pass their English or their math and get um, the skills that they need to be successful. And the parents' email was always, thank you. Same with the kids, thank you. Like they finally felt that they were being seen and that their kids were getting the help that they need. So I think the student perception and parent perception, uh, perception is a super big part of this, um, and that overall, very positive. Hi, my name's Akuterania Brenna. I'm one of the math teachers and math interventionists at the high school. Um, who staffs the math center is a really easy. It's the three of us. We're three teachers in the building, and last year we became, um, and Ed joined our team this year as math interventionists, in addition to teaching classes at the high school. Um, students who come to the center are typically students who are struggling in a math class. Sometimes they're doubling up on math, and that has just proven to be a little bit too much. Sometimes they come to us, and we already have the eighth grade data indicating to us that they likely are going to struggle in ninth grade math, or they've already been at our school and a teacher has said they are struggling or they did struggle last year. Um, a lot of the referrals that we get are based on benchmark data, grades, really hard data. Um, some of it is a little bit softer data, teacher referrals, hey, this kid struggled in my class last year and would benefit next year from this, or this child is currently struggling in my class, they have an F, they're not doing well on assessments. This particular topic seems to be a gap that 
in Algebra 1 we expect them to have and we need a little bit of extra time and support to fill that gap for that student. Sometimes the students come to us from the counselor. They've met with the counselor and they've indicated to the counselor, I don't feel supported or I need some extra assistance or I'm really nervous, I have a lot of anxiety around math, I need to just feel like I have another person that I can go to, somebody who can help me out. Um, or sometimes they get referred from an administrator. If a discipline meeting has been held and it's discovered that the kid is acting out because they feel disconnected from school and part of that is because they're not doing well in school, they might get referred into the intervention center or if a discipline meeting is held and in addition to the behavioral problems, we're seeing academic problems, which we all know happens a lot, right? Often those things go hand in hand. They might be referred into the math center. And I think that's it. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Have you ever been in a situation where you are not easily understanding what is being taught? Think about that, right? We all have, we all have. When that frustration builds, the, the lessons continue, the frustration builds, and some math learners experience that in very early elementary school. As that builds, years go by, and those students end up in our Algebra One geometry classes expecting to be able to do those skills that were, were difficult five, six years prior. So when those students then uh, come to us in the Math Intervention Center, we give a diagnostic assessment. And the goal of that is not to assess the skills that are currently being taught in their classes. It really backs up that content. For example, a student in geometry, if they're learning segment addition, writing segment addition equations from the geometry picture is not all that difficult. But the prerequisite skill of solving that equation may be where the child falls down, right? So um, the, the um, diagnostic assessment assesses those prereq skills for that current content that's happening in their classes. They're given the diagnostic, we grade it, we sit down with the student, we go over where their strengths are, what their areas of need are, and then from there, we create activities, pr uh, practice, different ways of getting that content through to the student. Um, the unfortunate thing is when they are first assigned, these students truly believe that they just aren't good at math. And, and, and I, I think I could speak for the three of us that we take it on as a, as a, a challenge and we meet that challenge quite honestly to make them believe, no, 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 you can do math. You most certainly can do math. These are weaknesses that are areas of need that you carried with you. So if adding numbers in elementary school was tough, adding signed numbers in middle school was really hard. And doing things from both sides of an equation in Algebra 1 is super hard. So that's where we come in. Those diagnostic um, skills are attacked at the end of their time that they're assigned with us. They take the diagnostic again. We share those results with the students. Best part is they smile, they wow, actually now I believe, you know what, I think I can do math. So, so that's the win, right? The other part of what we do while the students are with us is a quick check-in, how's it going in math class right now with the current content? That is the piece where it holds the students accountable when they're not in front of us, so that you know now I'm sitting in my geometry class and now I can do the segment addition and we are checking, oh, you had a segment addition quiz. I see you did much better than you thought you would do. And that's the accountability piece. Thank you. Keep this up a little bit. <laughs> yeah, that's karma. That's, that's fair. Hey, how's everything? Um, data. I'm sure like 90% of you love data. The math. Oh, I got to click it. Killing it. <laughs> All right. Um, what do we monitor? What data do we track? It's all about progress. We've talked about this a little bit. They do a diagnostic test on skills, prerequisite skills. We test them at the end to see what they learned over that period of time. Hopefully we can get them in the middle too so we can see it gradually. Depends on when the kids come into the center, but beginning, middle, and end is the goal. Um, we track their progress on what the skills are that we're trying to work with them on. The specific things that we're working on, we are seeing is their progress here. And then to the point earlier that Mr. Purr made, um, we're looking at their class grades. And we look at them with the kids, which I think is the most important part. 
they need to know where they're at and if they're making progress as we're going through this process. I think that's what we need to focus on here is the kids are seeing that progress. Um, who's responsible for tracking the data? We are, <laughs> right? Um, it's mostly the math center teachers. Um, the kids, like I said, we work with them. They look at their grades. They see if they're missing assignments. They see if their grades going up. And you can actually, as you're having those conversations, see the kids are seeing the progress and seeing success and building confidence. It's great. Um, hopefully the math teachers are also in their core classes are checking in with this and seeing that the progress is happening. Um, and counselors and admin are also involved as well. Um, Jeff mentioned Linkit. That's our data warehouse. That's how we communicate. We put in intervention plans for the kids. We give them goals. We track their progress and anyone who wants to see that, that information is there for them to see. We also hold a meeting monthly, a formal meeting, but um, we talk to each other all the time about what's going on in the math center. Um, emails, check-ins, all that stuff. But data is really important. It's driving what's happening here. It's making a lot of decisions for us. But beyond the da data, like those testimonials, I think the soft data is more important. You see kids having success and being confident. We had a kid in the math center recently say, I love math now. Like, that's immeasurable. That's what we're looking for. Um, that's it for me. Um, I'm Jessica Odie. This is Molly Mangan. We heard from her already. And Natalie Hinshaw. Natalie and I started in the ELA Center last year, and Molly joined us this year. Although Molly is not um, a um, stranger to MTSS, like she said, she was the uh, person who was pulling the kids in last year and I, sort of identifying them from the referrals. But also, Kristen mentioned um, some pe some of the people that attended um, the patent training um, several years back, and Molly was on that team as well. So we're just all kind of following, you know, kind of blending it together. Okay, so here is our implementation update. Um, so the first time we meet with a student, pretty much similar with what I was doing with them last year, is we explain, like, this isn't a punishment. We're here to help you. We're here to give you the supports that you need to be successful. Um, we also do goal setting with them. And the biggest thing with goal setting is that you want to make sure that they are small, attainable goals, but then also that you are action planning to meet those goals. It's one thing to like reflect on your goals, but if you're not actually putting a plan in place to meet them, then all you're doing is just reflecting, but not necessarily making a change. So we want to make sure that we are um, emphasizing that to the students um, and helping them create that plan. Um, we'll also be talking about assessment as well. We, just like the Math Center, we give standard assessments that we all uh, commonly give to see what areas that they need to improve on, what learning gaps they may have. And then after we get to know the students, um, they still mostly fall into these three categories. The first is engagement versus skill deficit. So we know coming in that they have some sort of deficit, but is it an engagement one where they're just not paying attention in class, they're not getting involved, or is it a skill deficit? Okay, because when you go to address them, it's going to look very different how you do that. Then we also have the, our favorite, the <laughs> executive functioning difficulties. Uh, so students don't know how to organize or prioritize. Uh, you open up their book bag and it's like there's like a monster or gremlin that lives in there and the papers are all crumbled and uh, I think we recently requested to get more folders and like we will sit down with them and we're like, here's your math folder, here's your English folder, here's this folder. Um, and so it's teaching them that organizational skill. And then finally, uh, the idea of needing connections. So I'll share a quick story. Um, I actually just texted them about this one particular student. Um, he had a 4% when he entered the English Center. And I was so pumped up because as of last week, he now has a 70%. So in a matter of three, well, I guess it's been more like five weeks at this point. In a matter of five weeks, he went from a 4% to a 70%. And this student um, was very quiet. He's one of those, like, you have to lean real close to hear what he's saying, and he's very reserved, doesn't talk. Um, and he came to me, and he goes, yo, Mrs. Mangan, like, loud. I was like, yo, what's up? <laughs> and he's like, 
I have a 70%. He's like, did you see my grade? And I'm like, oh, I didn't look yet. He's like, go look right now. Go look right now. <laughs> so like establishing those connections because these kids need to know that somebody is on top of them and rooting for them to be successful. So I just want to talk about some challenges that we brought up last year when we were here that we've sort of been able to address at this point, and then also um, some new challenges. The first one was attendance. Last year we had kind of a hard time with attendance. Um, once the kids came to the center, they would continue coming to the center, but it was kind of a challenge to get them there to begin with, especially when they're in their study hall or their owl time, and we're just kind of like, would you please come to the center? Like there was really no accountability piece there. So the way we remedied that was this year, they're actually assigned to us during that class period. So we take the actual attendance for them on record for that class period. So that really has raised the accountability. So if they didn't come to us, they, where are they? They're cutting, so that's a write up. But anyway. Um, <laughs> yeah, yeah, then we, you know, we have them come in, we, you know how it goes. Um, so secondly was the benchmark. Um, we realized that we needed some more data or more con um, consistent data. Um, and I will talk about that a little bit more on the next slide. Um, the next one is our tier one. So being in the center and having students come to us from all the different classes, we realized that there was a great, a very vast interpretation of our curriculum um, and that some people were, none of it was wrong or bad, but they were, it was just kind of being approached a little bit differently. Um, so what we did was, there was a lot of teacher autonomy, which is great, but we do need a certain level of consistency there. So we had actually a new principal last year, and he really kind of took this on, and the ELA teachers last, at the end of last year sat together in grade level teams. We really firmed up, like, okay, what are the extra material? So we know that this is like the, the novel that everybody's gonna read in ninth grade, but what are you doing to support and supplement that? And so now we have common writing pieces that every student is doing in that grade level, actually around the same marking period and time frame, which is extremely helpful for us because we already kind of know what those assignments are instead of last year having to like sit there and like figure out, try to pull up the article. We don't even know what they're doing. Now we're really feeling prepared. So that's been going really well. Um, the last thing, we are still working through manageable documentation of our interventions um, and anecdotal information. So we're all kind of doing it a little bit differently. And I think after, it's a, I mean, it's a lot. It's a lot to document everything. So we just sort of have to figure out a system that will work well for all of us. Um, actually, um, when Molly mentioned earlier that she sent us a text, all excited about that student, she actually sent us a text that was a picture of this amazing spreadsheet she's using. So I'm like, okay, like maybe I need to, you know, see how that's working for her and I can adopt that into what I'm doing as well. Um, all right, so the last piece that I'm gonna talk about is just the data. Um, we are using the Link It benchmark for all the students. Everybody's taking that in September. Um, we've been using a core reading maze comprehension test and a San Diego quick assessment. Um, the first one, like I said, the link it, that's for all students in the whole school. The other two, um, those are for students that are referred to the ELA Center. It helps us figure out if they have skill gaps. We can look for patterns, um, and then we can intervene appropriately. Um, and then in the midpoint, we use mostly teacher-created assessments. It really depends on the skills that we're working on. Um, I think I can speak for all of us right now. Our students are back with who's ever covering our classes and taking like a little quick check of some skills that, that we've been working on just so I can kind of see how they're doing. Um, and then lastly, we will be doing again our benchmark in December and January and in May and June. And I'm sure we'll be able to take a good look at our successes that way. So speaking of successes, um, this is where I come in here. Some of these have already been addressed, so I will come go through them quickly. The use of the intervention plans, Ed mentioned it, and we've talked about Link It. Um, that is that data warehouse, and that is where we can put those plans in. Um, as uh, the ELA team, we are still finding our way with um, documenting all the anecdotal information. However, the intervention plans are in place, and the benchmark data is there for us to create these uh, intervention plans from those skills. These are just some screenshots of what that kind of looks like without, with some anonymity there. Um, so um, having that one whole district 
um, system is super, super helpful because um, it, it travels between levels, it travels between schools, it travels with the kids. So eventually, um, as the middle school program amps up, um, those intervention plans, you know, the, that documentation will still be there and when they come to us. Um, and, and, you know, even when they had an intervention plan in ELA and maybe next marking period, they're gonna join the Mass Center. And, and now they're going to see some, some of our anecdotal information and some of our um, intervention plans as well. Um, we are so much more data driven than we were last year. Last year we were kind of set, uh, we kind of stood up here and we were like, this is great, we love this, but we don't really have as much data as we would like to have in order to get kids in and to diag uh, do use the diagnostics and figure out what we're, you know, what we're doing. And we were at the end of the first marking period last year and, um, you know, we were still, um, you know, really just working on um, building those relationships with the kids and, and working on their grades and things like that. And now, especially in ELA, that diagnostic information and that benchmark information and that data is so helpful. It, math lends itself to that and, you know, we needed help with that in the ELA. So we got that. Um, the collaboration, um, Natalie mentioned the collaboration between the interventionists and the department staff and curricularly the streamlining, also a success and transfer. Transfer has been a, such a bonus for us. Um, we've seen it on the benchmark data going up. Um, we had a student last year and Molly piloted the link at benchmark last year and uh, she sent an email that said, I can't believe this, but let me tell you, this is the second time I gave this benchmark and this kid went up. I don't know, Molly, what was it, like 60% or something? It was wild. Um, and so that transfer into that course was so, was amazing. Plus the kids, Ed mentioned it, look what I did. I used this strategy, I used this method in my class, that's so valuable. And like he said, immeasurable. Some greater feedback and where we're going. Um, Jeff mentioned the counselors reported that low failure rate. You guys applauded that, I teared up. Um, it is so, 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 so incredible that, that we had um, impact on that. Um, and I mean, I could retire now, as far as I'm concerned. <laughs> um, so as of this marking period, year two, there are 70, about 70 students assigned in the ELA centers. And as of last week, 73% of them are now passing first marking period and ready to roll into second um, with passing grades and not going to take a failure for their first marking period grade. Um, that does not mean they'll necessarily be exiting with us. Um, that, will, that will depend on some of that assessment data. They might still have those skill gaps, but like we said, we are balancing, we are a balancing act between getting credits and closing gaps. So that passing grade piece is also a big, big part. Um, and we're getting into a new marking period. The new marking period starts Friday. So what's going to happen? We're going to exit a few. We're going to get some new ones. Um, and they'll be, we'll be meeting new kids. We'll be kind of starting the ball rolling again. Um, I'm sure that um, things will change a month from now. I'm sure that we would have something new to tell you a month from now um, because we are still a work in progress. But um, nonetheless, we still consider this incredibly successful and we're so excited to be um, given the privilege to do it. Oh. I got it. All right, here we go. Woo. All right, no, I already did it. Okay, uh, please share something you learned today that you can take back and share with your respective school district. Maybe you need something. Can you take anything back yet? We can also revisit this. Yes. I love, we do a tutor, like math tutor center, but I love the idea, it's not, a, it's just a math tutor. Mm -hmm. I love the idea that it's a center, or a center and the teachers refer them to it and that you build it into, and I'm a counselor so I can see like, oh, so-and-so needs this on their schedule right, right now. Mm -hmm. And that they, because kids we know that need to go there the most, don't go there. Mm -hmm. so right, that. right, and, and I'm gonna, I'll, I'll share with you a little, a little like inside info. Um, we struggled a little bit, you know, as, you know, as, as teachers, as, you know, with, with some of our, even some of our colleagues 
in the beginning, this time last year, calling us tutors. You need math tutoring. Right. And we had, we, there had to be a paradigm shift That's to right. get away from that piece and into more of an intervention um, mindset. Thank you. Yes. Sugar. I'm going to take the mic. Uh, sorry, I don't like standing behind a podium. So um, we started PBIS um, at Ben Salem High School. We're a high school of over 2,000 students. So that presents a lot of challenges. And if you haven't noticed, if you take a look at many of the sessions, you're not going to see many sessions in the secondary level. You're not going to see many, many at all in the high school. So when Kristen Tester came to me a few years ago, said she wants to do this, I was a little taken back. It's the first time when we came up to the PBIS conference and see what was happening. And I looked around. I had no ribbons at that time, and now we have several. <laughs> I was like, what can we do? We, how, can we, how can we do this? Our first challenge was funding. So I said, OK, Brian, I want you to run this initiative with PBIS at our high school. I'm like, how much do I have? We got 2,000 students. I have $1,000. Now, I'm not a math genius, but that's like 50 cents a kid. But we still made it work because we had to be adaptive. We had to track all these behaviors. So in an elementary building, tracking the behaviors is done by you know, the classroom teacher or the interventionist. But we have to look at how many kids, what, what are we doing, what's major or minor, how the behaviors are then going to be taught. We had to look at meeting time for teachers and the philosophical views at the high school. Many people know, for any of you who work in a, in a high school, the philosophical view is we don't need this. We, we, we don't have it. Our, 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 our students are fine. What we found out, though, is that our students really need this. Emotionally, these students are, are expected to just know what they're doing, know how they're behaving, and they're very rarely rewarded for that behavior. Whereas in elementary school, you, you get it. So we had to get creative. So overcoming some of these challenges, we had to set up fundraisers. And working, we have received a tier one grant last year um, that we used to purchase E-Hall Pass. And uh, Carly's going to talk about that. And this year, we received funding for a tier two grant that we're then, yeah, Shannon's putting her hand up because <laughs> she applied for it. I just <laughs> wrote her coattails. <laughs> um, we received a tier two grant. And that grant's going to help us uh, one of the things that we're going to start is training more Check and Connect for our assistant, our administrations, and our support staff to then meet with kids and provide those targeted behavioral supports that we're just not seeing. Um, we created an acknowledgement system. So again, we didn't have much money. We, fund, we started setting up fundraisers. We raised a lot of money. But we didn't have a lot of money. So um, to, to track all these students, we kind of started a lottery. But we wanted to see what teachers were giving out what so that we can track it. So we created this little Google form. We put the Chromebook in the kiosk mode. And so when the kids turn in the tickets, they just enter their names, and there it is. And the data is easily provides a sheet, sortable, and we can then see who's giving out tickets, who's not giving out tickets, um, how often are students, what students are receiving the most tickets. And then we use that to lottery off prizes. We do that once a week. Um, Obviously, we created a PBIS team. We divided our matrix up and put it, hung it around the different parts of the room. And we really, focused, we really focused on our student leadership team. And we did it with a lot of persistence. So I'm going to have uh, Carly and Ron. They're going to tell you a little bit about some of the great things that we do. OK, so um, last year I mentioned that well, I never had anything this fancy. All right. Um, all right, I'll just do this, sorry. Um, we had to identify the needs within our school community. And a lot of times, you know, I came into PBIS team last year, um, and I really didn't know what was going on. And I really wasn't sold, to be honest, because I felt like that was for elementary, or I felt like we're, we're just rewarding these tiny behaviors and we have bigger issues. Like, yeah, you brought a pencil, here's a sticker. Or we have other things going on, especially after COVID. So um, we took a step back. We polled the staff to see what they needed. Um, be open to feedback too you know sometimes people aren't really happy with what we're doing because they feel like it's disruptive especially at the high school you know there's a lot of the departments are in silos you know i know that i don't see teachers on the other side of the building i'm stuck in the art room 
you know, or, and then the math people are all the way over there. I never get to see them. Uh, so we wanted to be open to feedback and like make sure that we're meeting the needs of all of our teachers as well. And then also ask the students what they want. Students will usually tell you what they want. Um, even if it's not what we always want for them, they're, they want to have fun. I mean, I think especially coming outside of COVID when they came back, they were really hesitant, they were afraid, and then, but they really wanted to be part of the community again. So we did that. And then we set some new goals for 23, 24, and a lot of these are just my own goals, but we wanted to continue the positive trends. We had a lot of positive feedback from everybody and from the community, because we run a lot of events after school, which is always difficult to do when you don't have money. And people are, you know, we're really spread thin as teachers. You know, there's a lot of emotional toll that's taken on us all the time because we're dealing with a million things. But um, we wanted to continue to do the positive things because that makes people want to come to work. It makes them feel energized. And you want to reach all of the students. Um, we wanted to continue to acknowledge the staff and the students. So what we do is, you know, we have a pretzel sale every other week. We make about 50 bucks. We have athletic gear. We get donations. And we do a drawing and for each grade level, and they get to pick whatever they want. But in addition to the student picking something, the staff also gets us. So I feel like they're being acknowledged as well for you know, reinforcing our positive behaviors. <clears throat> um, one of the goals for this year also was to reach students that don't always participate in the extracurricular activities. So what happens is, especially in our school, and Ron has always done a really great job of getting students involved. He coaches. He's on the other end of the building, and I'm the art teacher. I get the weirdos, right? <laughs> I get the kids that don't want to stay after school, and their hair is like always in their face, and they're not always engaged. But one of the things I wanted to do was to make sure that every student felt like Ben Salem was their home. Um, so we're we've doing that. Like I know on Monday, the PBIS team were running an indoor soccer tournament, which seems like really neutral, but. Turned out I made a connection with our new ELL coordinator who actually interpreted all the flyers that we put out. And we have a whole bunch of Spanish speaking students that had no idea that we were doing things like this after school. And we have four different teams signed up that are gonna participate that normally never stay. And so then I actually talked to Mr. Purr and I was like, I think we should get our soccer coaches out here so they can talk to the kids because maybe these kids wanna actually be on the team. So it's just little things like that and just trying to notice what your community needs and to try to create just fun things for the kids to get involved so they feel invested. And you know how they say, you know, like the rising tide lifts all ships? I feel like when we reach everybody in our entire community that supports them emotionally, that pays off in the MTSS centers because then they feel invested in school and they want to do better and everybody just does better when they're happier. And lastly, um, we want to outreach to the elementary schools to create community. So that's really difficult, but there's like a little trick in our district that um, we can drive a van with six or less students without a bus driver and it's free. <laughs> so I was like, oh my goodness, that's so great. So um, I'll show you some slides. So uh, I'm trying to, well, not just me, but other people, we're trying to take small groups of high school student leaders that aren't normally leaders anyway to do like cultural or fun things in the elementary school so that kids feel excited at the elementary school Again, they're invested in the community, they're invested in school, and they know when they come up, they can look for one of us, and they want to continue those traditions. So we're just trying to create more traditions within our school so that everybody feels more invested. And involve, oh, involve more staff and new staff. So a lot of times some of our newer teachers or our younger teachers are just trying to survive, you know? And I feel like I've, I do that a lot often, but I also were listening to the kids and like, who do you like? <laughs> you know, what, what cool new teacher is there out there? So we made an effort to reach out to some of the newer, younger teachers that aren't like completely burned out yet, <laughs> that want to participate. So we, we, we um, pulled in four new teachers that are really excited um, into our tier one. So the idea is that as we move into tier two for PBIS, is that these younger teachers can take over the tier one, can take over the fundraisers, so we can do bigger things. Because I know I personally felt a little bit spread thin because I have a million ideas and there's only 24 hours in a day. And you know, as teachers, we also have to remember that we should have to, we should ask for help if we need it, even though it's like, we don't always want to, but um, I had to learn to do that. And so it actually turned out really great. <laughs> so we have four young teachers that are coming in for us this year. Um, so some of the things that, like the feedback that we got, our biggest concerns were still class cuts. Um, it's a huge high school, kids can hide. Um, that's just what happens in high school. Um, lights to class, you know, kids are like sometimes making out under the stairwell, so you wanna make sure that they get there. 
and um, hall pass violations. Um, and the culture, you know, culture is still an important part of our school. We have a really diverse population. So again, we wanna make sure that everybody feels welcome and happy and they're acknowledged for all the things that they're good at. So two of our um, their answers to these concerns were e-hall pass, which you talked a little bit about last year, and our Ben Salem bucks. So what e-hall pass is, is just a system to track, instead of paper passes, it's just a way to track students where they're going how long they're out of the building, and then we can easily run reports. Um, you know, our high flyers, like, why did you go to the bathroom every single period for 20 minutes? <laughs> you know, you're missing half the day. You're missing, you know, you're missing important instruction, and that also sometimes will be reflected, like, hey, you're not going to class. This is why you're not doing well, and that's like an easy fix. Um, but this is what e-hall e pass looks like. I know a few people asked about this last year. The kid can literally just pick the teacher they're leaving, pick the destination, and it's, it shows up like this, and the teacher just approves it, and then it turns green, and then it's a running clock. So when they're a hall, you can say, hey, K, where you're going, they can show you exactly how long they've been out, where they're headed, and so you're like, this says south side bathroom, why are you on the north side? Like, get back to where you're going. And then we can stop the pass from our computers, and it looks like this. Um, and Ben Salem Bucks, oops, let me go back, sorry. And our Ben Salem Bucks is just sort of our reward system. You catch anybody doing something good, you give them a Ben Salem Buck. They're just little pieces of paper that have our core values, which is be present, have respect, stay safe and responsible. You catch somebody doing something good, you just give them out and then every other week, I literally draw it out of a hat and they get to pick a prize. And kids really want, you know, I always say they're high school kids, but they still want the stickers. They still want the acknowledgement. They like, you know, they'll come up and they'll flash. I'm like, yo, I got all the bucks. You know, they're really excited about them. I'm like, that's just paper, but okay. Um, but they're excited that they're acknowledged for something positive. So the idea is really, you know, it's, it's the idea of harm reduction. You put something positive in place instead of noticing all the bad things that they do. You just reinforce the positive things. So some of the things, the culture, we started really having a lot of fun. Um, you know, we started acknowledging other kids. So pretty much every year we always say, like, what do you want to do? This isn't driven by us. This is totally driven by the students. What do you want to do? We're here to help you facilitate. You be leaders. You're going to be the leaders in the community. What do you want to do? So um, we did a Diwali celebration last year, and some of our students, like, were doing henna on everybody, and that was really fun. Um, Black History Month has really blown up in the past few years. They do this great assembly. We have a step team now that came out of that that Miss Hinshaw helps run. Um, we had African dance, we had um, singers, we had dancers, and they come up with all of the routines in the program. And, uh, and teachers like, you did a great job. I'm like, I didn't do anything. I was just the adult that showed up and made sure everybody like stayed safe and got on the bus when they were supposed to. So they really, really take ownership of these cultural celebrations. Um, more field trips. Um, just getting them out of the building sometimes. I know it's like, sometimes it's a logistical nightmare and it's expensive, but just getting them out in the community and getting them to see other things. So, you know, the juniors, we had about 200 kids go to New York. We went to Chinatown just so they can go somewhere else. <clears throat> and again, just having fun is part of the culture. So every year people or the kids will be like, are we doing this? Are we doing that? And they get really excited. So we just celebrated Hispanic Latina Heritage Month. We do a poetry slam. Um, we took kids, high school kids down to the elementary schools that teach Latin dance. That was really fun. And Ron does the rest of it. All right, so I know we're really short on time, but one thing you notice through this whole presentation, there's a lot that falls under MTSS, but there's a staple, right? Making connections with kids. Make connections with kids is most important. When they make connections, they're more willing to listen. Right? So, and everyone has a role. As Mr. Per said, you need a good team. My role in the team is to just infuse positivity. So we started this uh, club called Blue Crew a few years ago, um, and we just kind of infuse positivity. We, we, we want to make connections with, with kids in our school and then make those connections with kids in other schools uh, in our district. So one thing um, that we've had as student representatives at the school board meeting. This took place, you see, they had masks, that's way back when we very first started during COVID. And then last year we started a new program that I'll talk about in a moment. Really quickly, Ben Salem Buddies and our high school students were there to present to the school board to include that community piece. And you'll notice up top community service, mentorship, and school spirit are, are, um, 
our values within our team, which now is morphed in, we combined SGA and our Blue Crew, and now we call ourselves the Owl Ambassadors. So our part of our PBIS team, we're now called Owl Ambassadors. One thing we do is freshman orientation. We have students, like, like people said, we have 2,200 students in the building. We have 400 new freshmen coming in. They're very nervous, understood, understandable. We greet them as, when they come off the bus. You see the signs, we play music, we cheer them on, we get five fives, we say go owls. Um, and then we do a scavenger hunt. They meet with their administrators and instead of just walking a tour and saying, here's the cafeteria, here's the auditorium, we have a fun scavenger hunt where they have to take pictures, it's competitive, it's a really cool event. Um, we have a give and take table. We are very, uh, very uh, diverse um, economically. So we have people that donate all types of um, school supplies and we put them out for anyone and everyone to take. You need something, take it. You, you want to donate, you can donate. We have teachers, all different types of staff members, and we have our students, as we said, that student buy-in, our Al ambassadors are the ones who constantly refill uh, the table. Student uh, Someone Cares campaign, this was brought to us from students, uh, you know, in the, in the female bathrooms. There were no uh, feminine supplies. Only thing they could do was go to the nurse, but sometimes the bathroom's the other in the building. What are you gonna do, right? I never, I never had that, but I understand I have a daughter. So I was like, wow, that's a great idea. What can we do to help? And again, it's donations. We don't have money. Donations from staff members, from other students, and then we set them up nicely with some nice messages right there in the bathrooms, part of community service. My Jersey, your impact, this is one of my favorite. We had seen this somewhere else and then we just kind of adapted it to our school. We have our senior athletes pick a staff member that had a positive impact on them. Um, and they get to, ch we, we present them with, a, you see the Jersey, then you see the, the uh, poster and the owl. We make a big deal, we send our owl ambassadors with it. So if they pick Mr. Purr, we come in, we're screaming, we're yelling, clapping, and they get to present it to them. Um, so again, this is just all stuff to infuse positivity into the building, make connections with kids. We recognize in the data kids are cutting. Why are they cutting? What can we do to create an atmosphere of where kids want to show up, right? And, you know, between the centers, where they feel the success, the stuff that Carly does with the culture, and then all the stuff we're trying to do, you blend it all together, and hopefully kids want to be there. And then once they want to be there, all of you will do a great job to, to make them want to stay there. So I'll just go quick, new student orientation, we have a holiday spectacular show, fundraiser, we give tours when the eighth graders come up. And this is one of my favorite things, the last thing I'll say is Ben Salem Buddies, where you see here, this says spread the word to end the word, right? So we have our, our regular ed kids working with our special needs kids, and they volunteer their time after school uh, twice a month for an hour and some change, and we do all different fun activities with the special needs kids to make everyone feel included. And I think this is great for both ends. Um, again, that, that falls under our mentoring piece. Overall, it's a lot of information, not a lot of time, but that's kind of what we bring to the table. <clears throat> Thanks, Mr. Morris. I'm gonna skip the quiz. This is our last slide. Um, I know it's two o'clock, so I can't even go back. That's great. So if you have to leave, I'm not offended. Um, I'm just gonna leave this slide up. I'm not gonna go over it, but I will say this. My final two comments, one, our PBS team deserves their own hour, so they're gonna get their own hour next year. You should've gave us an hour 15 minutes, I tried telling you in the beginning of the presentation. Um, and second and most importantly, I promise you if you reach out to me and I get to know you and your school a little better, you have these people, right? Every school is rock stars. I, I like to think every teacher's a rock star, but I live in a realistic world, right? Not every teacher, not every student, not every person is perfect. I get that, but every school has it. All right? I really don't do anything. They make me look good, which is really hard to do. All right, I just tap into like some of the rock stars in our building. I let them run, and these are the results. So if you guys want a prize, please come up and get what you want. If you have questions for us, I know you got 15 minutes for your next session. I'll gladly stay, answer a question, maybe give you a prize. Thanks so much. Have a great day.